We're going to be looking at the 10.6 of this HEC workbook. Uh, just going to read this question quickly. And they say in this question that uh, they've given you the detailed wedge follower on a disc cam and its starting position. Uh, they've given you the camshaft and they've given you the minimum distance. Okay, your camshaft, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to quickly just hatch that so that you can see the camshaft. When you do this, yeah, just hatch that camshaft. Um, you get marks for hatching it normally, so you may as well get on and do that straight away. Okay. There we go, there's your hatched camshaft. The minimum distance from the camshaft center to the cam follower is that distance from there to there. And they are telling me that you've got a rotation which is clockwise. Please put that in. Draw a little arrow showing that you are going in a clockwise direction. Remember, when you're going to be doing this, you need to draw little lines 12 little lines going out from here, from that center, with your 30 degree set square. Just, I'm just going to use some color here so you can see them. Construction lines going out there, a construction line going out there, a construction line going out there, and a construction line going out over there. Right, so we've got our 12 points going around. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to say, well, the starting point is over there, and I'm going to draw a line coming across from that starting point. Let's draw a little construction line. Whoopsie, let's get that on the line. Construction line on that going across, okay? And that will be the base of my graph, okay? Um, I need to start my graph out. And um, it tells me over here that I'm using a horizontal scale of 30 degrees is equal to 6 millimeters. Right, so 6 multiplied by 12, remember I've got the 12 points, 6 multiplied by 12 is going to give me 72. So I measure off a distance of 72, mark that very accurately over here, just at about that point over there to that point over there. Okay, and you can draw a nice dark line going in from that point to that point over there. Right, that's 72 millimeters. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to divide that up equally into 12 parts. Now, don't try and um, figure out what those, those little um, measurements are going to be. Remember, you've got that wonderful tool called a set square. Just draw a little line up there. I'm going to take a line at any angle over here, just in construction lines, and I'm then going to mark off on that line 12 equal points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12. Once I've got those 12 points, I take my two set squares together and I line the one set square up with that last point 12 over there and the end of the line which I need to find over here, sorry, let me just drop that, take that up over there, all right, and I'm going to take that point over there, there's point number 12, linked up with the end of the graph over there, and I'm, I can draw a little line going down, just a construction line, shift it across, line coming down, shift it across, line coming down, and we can carry on doing that as fast as you can. Right. Please do this. Don't just use your measurements on your ruler unless they really, really are easy measurements. Rather do this. It is far more accurate at the end of the day. And this little graph, sometimes they ask you to get certain information off this graph. And it's vitally important that that information is accurate. Otherwise, you will lose marks. Right. There are the 12 little spaces that I need. I can now drop lines down over here. 
this construction line's coming down from all of those, and you should find that you've got that perfect six millimeter spacing going across here. There we go. Okay, after you've done that, you're going to then put some labels on this. Um, I'm going to start out and I'm going to say that I have a um, displacement. Displacement in millimeters. All right. Um, this is called the displacement diagram. Um, okay, you need to put a, sorry, displacement graph. Displacement graph. Right, as fast as you can, put that in. Um, you must show uh, that this thing has a scale. Scale, 30 degrees is equal to six millimeters. All right, and those are the things that you need to have written over there. Um, you then start looking at this thing which talks about the motion. Um, I'm going to do that in the next video. Right, so this little graph over here is all about the rotation in degrees and the displacement. So we must also write in over here, rotation in degrees. in degrees. Right, rotation in degrees. And we start out and we say, well, naught degrees. Then I've got 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, 120 degrees. 150 degrees, 180 degrees, 210 degrees, 240 degrees, 270 degrees, 300 degrees, 330 degrees, and 360 degrees. Everybody happy with that? Right, once I've got that, I can now start using all of this information about the motion of the cam. It says here, the disc cam rotates at a constant velocity. Very important to read that part. Um, when you get to matric, that is going to probably change and they're going to tell you how that velocity is going to be imparted. Um, to a uniform motion uh, to the wedge-shaped follower, it says, um, the first, the first step, it rises 15 millimeters during the first 60 degrees of rotation. So I say measure off 15 degrees, I mean 15 millimeters, and I come along here and I measure off at 60. I measure off my 15, 15 millimeters, and I can now draw a line which says that my cam is going to rise 15 millimeters. You can see it over there. Um, it then says it remains stationary for the next 90 degrees of rotation. Okay, so I say for the next 90 degrees of rotation, it's going to remain stationary. 30, 60, 90 degrees of rotation. Can you see that idea? Okay, and then it says um, 
that it is going to rise 20 millimeters for the next 60 degrees of rotation. Okay, so, sorry, not 20 degrees, 20 millimeters. It's going to rise another 20 millimeters for the next 60 degrees of rotation. So I measure off 20. I come over here and I go little line coming across, little construction line coming across over here. 30, 60, and I measure up that 20 millimeters over there. And I can now draw a line which is going to join up from there to there. It then says um, that it is, it remains stationary for the next 90 degrees of rotation. You know what to do with that. 30, 60, 90 degrees of rotation. It's going to do that a bit darker over there. And then it is going to return to the starting position to complete one revolution. What is that doing? It is going back to the starting position, which means that it's going down. There is the graph. Get that right, and the rest of this is going to be easy. I'm going to stop the video now, and then we'll do the next video. We are video. going to be drawing the cam profile of this, and the way that we do that, well, we can start out and we can say, there is zero degrees, zero degrees is at that point over there, and I can write in zero degrees up here. Um, tell me, what is, the, what is the total height of this thing? I'm going to come straight up to the top over here, and I'm going to just draw a little line across, and I can mark off very quickly where my total height is. There's my total height. And I'm just going to draw that total height in over there. Okay, once we've got the total height, you can get that off that graph. Well, it's much easier for me to place the uh, degrees that I've got. Now, this thing is rotating in a clockwise direction. Always put the numbers in the opposite direction to which that arrow is going. So over here, 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees. 120 degrees, 150 degrees, 180 degrees, 210 degrees, 240 degrees, 270 degrees, 300 degrees, 330 degrees, and this is 360 degrees over here at the starting point again. Right, after you've done that, well, you can now say at 30 degrees, it has risen that amount. And I can come along here and I can draw a line going across from my 30 to that line over there. Once I've got that, I take my pair of compasses, I place it at the center of the shaft and I wind them back to that point over there, and I wind that round to where 30 is, and I can make a little mark at where 30 is. The next one is at 60 degrees. I come along here, I take a line going across, and I can extend my pair of compasses out, and I take that down to where 60 degrees is, and I'll make a little mark. So there's my little line. What happens from there? Well, it remains constant. Now, this is very important. As soon as you're seeing it remain constant, do you think I want to freehand my curve there? No. no. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my pair of compasses set at that, and straight away I say, well, where does it end? It ends on this 150, doesn't it? So I can straight away, from 150, I can draw a line going nice and dark. Can you see that? Okay, once I've got that, I then start increasing in height again, and I take a line going across from this point. What is this point over here? That is 180, okay? 180 degrees, and I can now take my pair of compasses, extend it out, go around to where 180 is, draw the arc, just a light little arc going around like that, and make your little mark at where 180 is. There it is. Uh, the next one is to go up to 210. 
take that across. And the same story from 210 uh, to 300 is going to be that radius, isn't it? So you take your pair of compasses out to that point over there, come around, and just draw a construction line arc. You can see that it's going around from 210 to 300 is a nice dark arc, which you can now draw in using your pair of compasses over there. And then you can then come back over here and you can say it then drops down from 300 down to this 330 over here. I'm just going to change the color so you can see this. There it is coming across. And you can take that around, ding, 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 to where 330, uh, 300 is, sorry, 330 is, sorry, there we go. That, that's the point that you need. And then it goes all the way back to 360 over there. Our next trick is take your page off the board and you can start doing your little freehand curves. Just make little dots going between these points over here to check that it all makes sense. There it is. You can sort of see that it's right and you can now take your freehand curve around to there. And then you come over here um, and it goes out. Little dots going out like this. Tick, 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 up to that point. And you can do a nice freehand curve going over there. And then you come over here and from 300 going down, tick, 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 tick. There it is. And you can now do a nice freehand curve going back down to the starting point. And there we go. There is our answer completed. The very last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to write in the label of this thing, which is CAM C A M profile P. Ah, oh, jeepers. P R O. How do you spell file? There we go.